Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Willett. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. Here's a question for you. What was the first great European civilization? If you answered ancient Athens, you would be wrong. The first great European civilization was the Minoan culture on the island of Crete. These were a Semitic peoples, ancestors of modern day Persians. And the Minoans are a mystery. This brilliant society that had paved roads and running water a thousand years before the Romans mysteriously vanished, leaving behind enigmatic art and architecture. In 1900, Sir Arthur Evans began excavations on the site of the Palace of Canossus, during the Bronze Age, the largest building in Europe. The sprawling, expanding structure may be the source of the Greek concept of the labyrinth, although the myth of the labyrinth is much darker than a confusing floor plan. Canossus, a palace, a solar temple for people who worshiped nature, the cycles of the sun, the moon, the stars, was brightly painted from its red columns to its vibrant frescoes. It is here that we meet the Minoans, young and beautiful, fashionable and athletic. The chic men and women are wasp-waisted with long, curling, dark hair. In a hot climate, the women's dresses bare their breasts to the sun. Even the snake goddess figurines wear the pretty flounced skirts. The Minoans depict themselves as daring athletes, vaulting fearlessly over the length of a bull's body, from horns to tail, effortless, acrobatic matadors. Dolphins arch and rise above the surf and wool murals, a familiar sight to an island people. All seems happy and joyous, light-hearted. Nothing in the art expresses the true nature of the Minoan culture, and nothing predicted what was to come the devastation from a natural disaster and the collapse of a hierarchical social order into child murder and ritual cannibalism. By 2000 BCE, the Minoans were the dominant culture in the Mediterranean. Their contemporaries, the Egyptians, called Crete the land beyond the sea. The Bronze Age Greeks referred to their masters as the Ato Cretans or the real Cretans. Sir Arthur Evans named these powerful people after the legendary King Minos, although there is not a single indication of a male ruler in Cretan art. Is it possible that this trading nation was directed by a matriarchal culture? The extent of the reach of the Minoans is astonishing. Fragments of one of their two languages, Linear A, was found in Norway in the silver mining site of Kronsberg, indicating that the Minoans were the metal merchants to the Mediterranean. It is believed that their trading hub, their Hong Kong, was the city of Akrotiri on the volcanic island of Thera, today's Santorini. And here is where the end began. One summer's day, sometime around 1627 BCE, the volcano of Thera exploded in the largest eruption in human history. 70 miles across the sea, the Minoans could have seen the 36-kilometer volcanic plume, but could not have imagined that they would be overwhelmed by a succession of tsunami waves. These waves swept across and through and over the coastal towns, knocking out the walls facing the sea, poisoning the soil with salt, depositing deep sea minerals and marine life into what would be the ruins of a naval empire. After an 80% mortality rate on Crete, dark clouds of ash covered and blocked the sun for years, causing climate change, spoiling harvests all over Europe. And so the Minoans were destroyed 3,500 years ago. The marine style of pottery, so famed in art history, dates to the difficult years after the disaster. The playful and dynamic octopus motif was found on pottery buried with the remains of slaughtered and cannibalized child sacrifices. The Minoans had been part of a hierarchical society where a priest king controlled nature. 
But after the apocalypse, there was a spiritual crisis, a cultural trauma. The Greeks, seeing an opening, finally invaded the once mighty empire that had terrorized them. In 1400 BCE, it was all over, and the remnants of the Minoans were vanquished. The Minoans, who never needed an army, vanished into history, but lived on in Greek legend. The wife of King Minos gave birth to a man-beast, the Minotaur, the result of an unspeakable union with a bull. Hidden at the center of a maze, the labyrinth designed by the first architect Daedalus, the Minotaur demanded tribute from Greece, young men and women whom he devoured. Finally, with the help of Ariadne, the daughter of King Minos, the Greek hero Theseus entered the labyrinth, killed the Minotaur, and found his way out of the maze by following Ariadne's thread to the entrance. The horror of the hybrid, the beast within the human, haunted the Greek imagination. The centaur, the satyr, that which must be controlled by rational civilization. The labyrinth that both led to and concealed this heart of darkness surfaced from the collective unconscious as a sacred path extracted from primal memory and was inscribed on the floor of Chartres Cathedral. And the Minotaur himself? What of him? He sprang to life under the pen of Picasso, still lethal and menacing, thousands of years after the Minoans had dissolved into the mystery that is always present at the heart of art. <laughs>